I also want to thank I also want to thank four years ago the Socialist Party for pre-selecting me to stand in this seat. I was more surprised than anybody when we won. I was told at the time, you're not going to win, just stand, we'll just stand somebody. And these buggers turned my life upside down. Now the position that I will have in the next four years is very, very clear and very, very simple. I will be arguing and fighting on council and with local communities to try and provide some relief for housing commission tenants in particular, low income people and people on fixed incomes in this area. I aim to help to stand up to dodgy developers like Banco who think that they can come into this area and ignore the fact that 1,500 submissions were made against their development on Smith Street and think they can just go over the heads of the democratically elected councillors at VCAP, they're going to have another thing coming. I can tell you that. Unlike everybody else who will tell you that they love their children, that they love the community, you know, that they, 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 they're really nice people, and then when they get into power, they will do what everybody else does. The Labour Party, the Liberal Party, they're all the same. Once they get into power, you don't see them for four years. We will be standing on our record. There used to be a day in Australia and elsewhere where governments didn't just take off you, but under pressure from the trade union movement and from working people as a whole, actually did some decent things, like bring, bring in Medicare. We're now living in a period in history, in this country and overseas, where capital is turning over every single stone, looking for sources of new profit. Childcare, water, the internet, and most disgustingly of all, the health system. How can you sleep at night when you try to make money out of people's health? That's what they want to hand the Medicare system over to. People who are going to put profits before the needs of our children, the older members of our population, and the society as a whole. Another issue that we've raised is the fact that on Smith Street in Collingwood, it is the main area for Aboriginal people in Melbourne. You can, it's the only street in Melbourne that you can walk down, you can be guaranteed to meet an Aboriginal person. They meet there. It's a sense of community. They congregate. They chat. They have coffee. And surprise, surprise, you know, horror upon horrors, sometimes they have an ale. Well, the council have got a plan that was thrashed out last year with local indigenous people that's supported by traders and most people in the community. It was a unanimous decision of council to go for a progressive solution to any public behaviour issues that exist on Smith Street. For example, a 24-hour indigenous-run bus, a cultural centre for the Aboriginal community in the area, because this is a meeting place for many, many years for Aboriginal people, which is great, and also a sobering up facility. Um, unfortunately, the state government have said that they're not going to put their hand in the pocket. And uh, today's rally is all about putting a bit of heat on them to say you need to meet your responsibilities to Indigenous people here in Melbourne. It's very good that you're saying sorry for past sins and you support uh, reconciliation for past sins, but there's current problems right now that we need your help on. Council can't do it on their own, because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is that uh, the traders are going to continue to push for, or some of the traders at least, for a, for, a, for a police solution through a local law, and that's going to turn into a civil rights issue. So what really needs to happen is the state government need to match council, and let's get this plan up and running and do the right thing by everyone on this street, the traders, the shoppers, the workers who work in this street, and of course the indigenous population who uh, congregate on this street. But having said that, what the Labour Party are saying to you if you're a public housing tenant is that vote for us first, that's fair enough for them to say that, we've got no problem with that, but put Steve Jolly and the Socialist Party last, last. What does that say about where they're at? It is a badge of honour to be put last in this election by the people who are bringing you the tunnel that are bringing you inappropriate developments, that are privatising our services, that are cutting back on social services and are going to shit on public housing tenants like they're doing right now in Carlton with this private-public partnership. So I wear that and we all wear that as a badge of honour. We don't want your preferences. You can stick your preferences where the sun doesn't shine because we will win this election without those preferences. I see my role as a city councillor is to reflect in the views of the community on council and fighting to mobilise people for the, for, the, for the ideas that they have. For example, we've been fighting user pays and privatisation on council. We've been trying to get make sure that council, especially council that calls itself left wing, 
doesn't employ casuals, but rather employs permanent and part-time permanent staff, and sets a standard to say that there's a better way of running this country than what the neoliberals are running in other councils, and obviously in the state and federal government. So that's what we're trying to do. There's a lot of issues that the council in the past have let down the public on. They're very, very angry, and we're in the business of mobilising the public to try and get a total U-turn in the direction of Yarra City Council from what they've been doing in the last few years. Is workplace um, legislation similar to the proposals that the Howard government's introducing? Does it have a serious effect on the working of a local council? Yeah, I think that there's between $500 million and $1 billion of money that would normally go to council that's been stolen by the federal government. But they've given the council more jobs to do. So what's that meant is that the councils have had less money to service the local area. But worse than that, we've had councillors who have seen their role as to just basically do what they're told and carry out that neoliberal program. Yeah. What we're saying at council, from the Socialist Party perspective, is that with an $88 million budget, we can do something about childcare. Yeah. We can actually build childcare centres. We can put more money into youth services. We can stop the trend towards user pays. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're trying to do at Yarra City Council. I am. I am a socialist. And I'm proud to be a socialist. And everything that I've done and what these candidates have done over the past few years in this area from the Socialist Party and all our people have done helping you with the tunnel, with public housing and all the other issues is because we're socialists. I became a socialist in 1982 when I joined the Labour Party in Ireland. I got politicised by the anti-apartheid movement. I saw the war in Ireland, in the north of Ireland, the struggle against Margaret Thatcher when I lived in the UK. I fought as a socialist against Mugabe in 1983. I was in Tiananmen Square in 89. I was a socialist. I was a socialist when I was in Richmond Secondary College. When I came down here in 93 and worked for the party and now as a councillor I'm a socialist. What's happened tonight is an absolute disgrace. President Bush has asked John Howard to turn Canberra into martial law, into a police state for 24 hours. Prime Minister Howard has clicked his seals and said yes sir we will. All of these police tonight being paid for by taxpayers' dollars are here to give President Bush his right to free speech tomorrow at Parliament House and to deny the right to free speech to Australians who are here to protest about the selling out of Medicare tomorrow in the secret talks between Howard and Bush uh, to support the occupation of Iraq and the war against terrorism. It's an absolute disgrace. Canberra has been turned into martial law tonight to, so President Bush can have his say, yet Australians are not going to be allowed their say tomorrow because of this ban on PAs and the ban on megaphones. It's an absolute disgrace. Disgrace, and it sets a very, very dangerous precedent for trade unionists and other protesters in the years to come. And we think it's an absolute disgrace. We will be defying the bans tonight and tomorrow on PAs and megaphones and making sure that the secret meeting that they're having tomorrow is made clear to all Australians that we are not going to allow them to sell out the pharmaceutical benefits scheme and Medicare in order to, to get a free trade agreement with the Americans. It's a disgrace. But you've got to draw the dots. You've got to say it's not good enough to say Steve's a top bloke. Steve helps us out. You've got to draw the political conclusions. Why is it that we and our party are always there on the front line with you and the others are like what we call political chameleons or political wombats who come out every election and they don't see it for three years? Draw the dots together. So help us with our campaign. Give us your money, give us your time and give us your support. But those of you who want to stay active in politics, join with us and let us build a powerful movement. Because what we want in Yarra is not a socialist councillor, but a socialist council. Thank you. Uh, hey, listen, guys, we just got the results in from... I felt bad because I couldn't have put him in and there was no one there. Um, we, we just got the results in from Collingwood College and uh, Atherton Gardens. They're the two areas where we thought we were the strongest. So far, we've had the results in from our weaker areas and we've trebled our vote. The green vote has fallen and our vote has gone up, as I said before, in case anybody here has come new. So we're becoming the major left-wing opposition to the Labour Party in the area. Yeah. At Collingwood College, which is at the, obviously at the high-rise estate in Collingwood, in the last election we got 3%. Uh, today we got 10%. Yeah.